Bedtime with Mrs. Honeybee. Hello, little honeybee. Come on in and get comfortable. In Mrs. Honeybee's neighborhood, there's always something going on, and you're here just in time. I'm so excited for you to meet all of my friends, and they can't wait to meet you. We'll be stopping by a few of my friends' houses. Can you guess who? But look, I'm still here holding your hand. Well, good, because that would be outlandish and uh, fantastic. Whose voice was that? <laughs> I know you've heard it before. <laughs> For my special honeybees, who listen until the very end of this story, there will be a surprise just for you. That's all I can say for now. <laughs> I hope you don't mind if my friendly little dog Harold sniffs around your feet. He might even jump up to say hello. I've told him all about you and all of the adventures we've been on. He's so excited to finally meet you. <laughs> Wow, he was sprightly. Elsa was just telling him about that one time when we were in Arendelle and Olaf breathed in and out so big that his belly fell right off and rolled down the hill. Do you remember that adventure? Oh goodness, silly Olaf. Elsa was here a few moments ago. You just missed her. She had to rush back to the enchanted forest to smooth things over. Harold always loves when Elsa visits because they usually play fetch with little snowballs that she makes him. Then, when Harold is tired from so much fetching, he gobbles up the snowball like it was a snow cone. It's the cutest thing. You're such a good dog, Harold. I'm so grateful to have you by my side every day. You are so happy and cuddly, and you always have your smile on, ready to go every morning. Your smile and your happily wagging tail makes my heart shine. Now that I think about it, just this morning, I wrote that I was grateful for Harold's snuggles in my gratitude journal. Do you have one of those? A gratitude journal? It's really just a little notebook with lined paper inside, but it has made a big difference in my life. Every morning, right when I get up, even before I brush my teeth, I write down three things that I'm grateful for in my gratitude journal. That's how I practice gratitude and it's considered a practice because you do a little bit each day to get better and better over time. Just like sports or dance or anything really, practicing gratitude every day helps you become a more grateful person. A grateful person appreciates who and what they have around them and because of that they can spread love and kindness out into the world. You can start right in your own neighborhood. Practicing gratitude also enables us to reflect and give thanks for who and what we have in our lives. When we fill our hearts with gratitude, we bring the things we appreciate into focus. And just like Mr. Honeybee always says, what you focus on grows. So let's focus on gratitude so we can have even more to be grateful for. Harold would love to practice gratitude with you, don't you, good boy? First, let's clear our minds and open our hearts. Sit down quietly, Harold if you want to practice gratitude with us. Take a slow, deep breath in through your nose. With the air in your chest, feel the sensation of your heart beating once, twice, 
three times. Then slowly breathe out through your mouth. In your mind, bring up one thing you are grateful for. It can be a big thing or a small thing or not a thing at all. It can be a person or even something that you recently learned. With what you are grateful for in your mind, take another slow breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Quietly in your mind or even out loud, say thank you and send some gratitude out into the world. Great job practicing gratitude. You too, Harold. He's so excited to go for his walk, he can hardly sit still. Every day, Mr. Honeybee and I take Harold for a walk around the neighborhood. It's one of our favorite things to do because we get to enjoy the sunshine, see all of our friends in the neighborhood, and sometimes we even learn something new. I promised Harold we would go to the dog park today so he could see his friends. Okay, Harold, go get your leash so we can go. Oh, Mr. Honeybee, come down. Yes, dear? We have a friend over. Oh, hello. So glad to see you in the neighborhood. My little honeybee and I are practicing gratitude today. What did you write in your gratitude journal this morning? Hmm, well, I'm grateful for lots of things. So it was hard to choose just three this morning. So I wrote down four. I am grateful for the sunshine. I am grateful for the smell of your cooking in the morning. I am grateful for our little dog, Harold. And most importantly, I am grateful for you. <laughs> Those are some wonderful things to be grateful for. I bet one of the things Harold's grateful for is neighborhood walks to the park. Don't forget Harold's treats for the dog park. He loves to share with all of his friends. I think Elsa took the treat back home after her visit. Oh, thank you for the reminder. I almost forgot. Wait, I thought Iron Man needed them for his dog, Iron Fluff. You're right. That's where they are. We left them there after the barbecue at his house. You definitely have to stop by Iron Man's house on the way to the dog park because Harold loves his treats. Okay, we will definitely stop by Iron Man's house on our walk. Bye, Mr. Honeybee. Bye, Mrs. Honeybee. And goodbye to you, little honeybee. See you soon. It's such a lovely day out today. The sun is shining. There's a warm, gentle breeze blowing. Do you want to hold Harold's leash and walk him? He has a bright blue leash with his name written in yellow letters so we know which one's his. Here, have a try. What was that, Harold? Who do you see? Oh, it's little George Pig riding his skateboard. He just got a skateboard for his last birthday, and he's been practicing each and every day. Just like we practice gratitude, and he's gotten to be quite the skateboarder over these last few months. Little George can do all sorts of tricks now, Oh look, he's going to do a front side flip. That's the trick he's been working on lately. He landed it. Great job, little George. Chocolate cake. I didn't know anything about skateboarding until little George Pig showed me. See, just Mr. Honeybee and I realized you just never know what you'll learn taking a stroll through the neighborhood. Now Harold and I know all about skateboarding and front flips and ollies. Harold likes walking with you. You're doing a great job holding his leash. He loves going to the dog park. 
He knows exactly which way to go to get there. It's just down this next street on the left. Oh, would you look at that? Over there on the other side of the street in the bushes that line the sidewalk. That red and white robot is actually one of Iron Man's newest suits. They are so technologically advanced now that sometimes the suits even wander around without Iron Man controlling them. And when they do, they all become interested in different things. They all are developing their own individual robot personalities. This one loves bugs. When he gets out and about, he studies all the different insects and spiders that live in the neighborhood too. Hmm. I cannot remember his name. What was it? I think they call him Mark 87. Yes, that's it. His name is Mark 87. Hi, Mark 87. Hello, Mrs. Honeybee. This is one of my most special little honeybees. Remember the one I mentioned was going to be visiting more often? Oh yes, I remember. Hello, my friend. We're on our way to the dog park with Harold. Enjoy the rest of your day, Mark 87. Thank you. Bye-bye, Mrs. Honeybee. Mark 87 can spend all afternoon sitting in the grass, hunched over following little roly-polies scurrying around or watching a spider weave its web. He even has butterflies during certain months. Do you want to hear a fun fact about creepy crawling insects? Of course you do. Okay, tell me yes or no so I can hear you. Do you think a spider is an insect? A spider is actually not an insect. Insects have six legs. That's what makes them an insect. A spider has eight legs, so it cannot be an insect. Interesting, right? I would have never known, but on one of our walks, Mark 87 introduced me to one of his daddy long leg spiders who just finished its web. Mark told me all he knew about spiders so far. And let me tell you, he knows a lot. Oh, maybe next time you see a ladybug, you can count the legs for yourself. Uh-oh, heads up, fly ball ahead in our way. Here comes Peppa Pig running in for the perfect fly ball catch. Will she catch it? She did. Great catch, Peppa. That fly ball flew fast, but you ran faster. I think I will win. I can run very fast. You and your team are definitely going to win the next neighborhood baseball game. Good thing she caught that because I didn't bring my baseball glove with me today. Peppa Pig plays the outfield for our neighborhood league, and she's always outside practicing her catch technique for fly balls. I can run at 100 miles an hour. She says that you have to, oh, how did she say it? Catch the ball with your eyes, which apparently means that you should never ever let your glove block your eyesight when you put up your arms to catch the ball. She's an expert at it. At our last game, Mr. Honeybee hit a home run and the ball flew so far and so fast, even Peppa couldn't catch it. You should come to our next game. That house right there on top of the grassy hill, that's Peppa Pig's house. It looks like Mummy and Daddy Pig are home. That's their red car out front. Oh look, Peppa and George drew out a hopscotch game in rainbow colored chalk on the sidewalk. How fun. I'll hold Harold and his leash so you can hop along to the hopscotch. Take a slow, deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Then 
balance on one foot on the square with a bright red one in it. Imagine you're a bright pink flamingo. You can even hold your flamingo wings out to the side to help you balance. Then hop to the purple two and as you do, you switch legs to balance on the opposite leg. Then both feet on the ground over the three and the four, then back to one leg for five, two legs for six and seven, then finally on one leg for eight. Great job. Iron Man's house is just around the corner. Let's get Harold his treats. He's being such a good dog on this walk. Iron Man's house is that red house over there, made completely of iron. Iron Man built this special house for when he really wants to get away after a long day. When he's away, Jarvis stays here. We can't really see him because he's an AI, but we can talk with him when he's here. Just up these steps to the big iron doors. Go ahead, knock. Hmm, Jarvis must be out too. When Jarvis is out, we can talk to him by writing on a hidden touch screen that's tucked under a table on Iron Man's porch. Here it is. It's a very high-tech machine. Jarvis taught the whole neighborhood how to use it. We just use a fingertip to write our message to Jarvis. Then, no matter where in the galaxy he is, he can write back and it appears on this screen. Isn't that nifty? I'll say, Jarvis, do you have Harold's treat bag from the other day? We're going to the dog park and Harold really wants a treat. Oh, look, Jarvis is writing back. Hmm. He's saying that the treats are actually at Peppa Pig's house because Danny Dog was looking for her snack. Okay, my dear little honeybee, I need your help with this one. Can you please, please, please remember that we need to stop at Peppa Pig's house on the way back to get the treats? Harold would really appreciate it and I might forget again. Maybe we can say it together out loud that the treats are at Peppa Pig's house. Ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. The treats are at Peppa Pig's house. Sorry, sweet Harold. No treats just yet. I'm sure some of your friends at the dog park will have some to share. And we're almost there. It's just right up ahead, just past Elsa's house. You can even hear the happy barking dogs. That's one of Elsa's favorite parts about living here. She loves to hear the dogs playing and barking. When they're happy, she's happy. Actually, she told me that the happy barking dog sounds is one of the things she writes down in her gratitude journal. All the dogs at the dog park love it when she visits because she makes them their very own snow piles. There's a husky, one of those snow loving pups that really loves it when Elsa is there because he loves to dive straight into the snow piles. Harold is really getting excited now. When we get this close, he sticks his little fluffy snout in the air and smells that all of his friends are close. They usually meet us at the gate. And here they are now. There's a husky with light blue eyes and there's a spotted Dalmatian, a sweet golden retriever and a little Yorkie. That's Harold's best friend. Hello, everyone. 
We open this first gate and make sure it's closed. Then we open the second gate to go in the park. We're careful to make sure none of the dogs get out. Okay, Harold, go have fun. Look at Harold running around with his Yorkie friend. They chase each other for hours and hours, tumbling through the grass and exploring the trees and wilderness just beyond this green grass area. The Dalmatian really likes you. She loves to be pet. Oh, look, Harold is back. He wants us to follow him and his Yorkie friend. I think he's going to show you his favorite part of the neighborhood dog park. Not everyone knows about this. It's kind of a neighborhood secret. So you're officially part of the neighborhood now that you're going to see it. Harold knows how to get there. I always forget if it's left at the oak tree or right at the tall bushes. There he goes. It was right at the tall bushes. It's so overgrown here that you might have to push some of the brush a bit. We're almost there. Can you hear it? It's a river running right through the dog park. The dogs can swim there because a small pond has formed on the banks of the river and it doesn't flow so fast there. Harold and the rest of the little pups love to splash in the water and play. The golden retriever will want you to throw one of the sticks she finds once we get there. That's her absolute favorite thing to do. That's probably why her breed is called a retriever and she's golden just like the sun. Here we are and here she is with her stick. Go ahead, take the stick from her. Then take a slow, deep breath in through your nose and pull the stick back as far as you can getting ready to throw. When you breathe out, throw the stick as far as you can. Wow, great throw. There she goes right after it, just like usual with a splash. She's not at all afraid of the water. Harold is content to splash in the pond with his little Yorkie friend. Silly Harold, you're splashing us. I brought us towels so we can sit down and pet all the pups, enjoy the sunshine, and just relax. Isn't it so nice to feel the sun shining warmly down on you? The fresh smells of the grass, the flowers, and the flowing river fill the air. I just love the dog park and my neighborhood. I'm very grateful to live here to have all my friends, including my dog friends. And most importantly, I'm so grateful for you, my little honeybee. Spending time with you is one of my favorite things to do. You just never know what adventure awaits when we spend time together. Oh, here comes Harold. He wants to curl up and enjoy the sunshine with us too. Let's all take a slow, deep breath in through our noses. Feel the warm sunshine on our cheeks and the cool, misty air coming in through our noses. Then, let's slowly breathe out through our mouths and sink into the soft grass of the riverbank. Oh goodness, I dozed off there for a moment. That's why I love it here. It's so relaxing. Wake up, Harold. It's time to head back. Let's head back through the brush, bushes, and trees, and back out to the green grass. Say goodbye to all of your friends, Harold. Until the next time, everyone. Remember, we have to open this first gate, go through it, and make sure it's closed before we open the second gate to leave the park. 
We're careful to make sure none of the dogs get out. Okay, now let's head back home. I'll show you a different route back so you can see more of my very best friends. Oh goodness, Harold, I almost forgot your treats. My little honeybee, do you remember where the treat bag was from the beginning of our walk? Do you remember whose house we left his treat at? Hmm, think really hard. We left them at Peppa Pig's. Harold has been so patient. I think he deserves two treats today. Do you want to hold Harold's leash again? He really likes walking with you. It'll help me so I can point out all of my special little honeybees on the way back. You have been such a pleasure to spend time with, my little honeybee. If you enjoy my stories, consider becoming a member of the Honeybee Library. Being a Honeybee Library member gives you access to hundreds of exclusive bedtime stories not available on my podcast. The Honeybee Library has hundreds of bedtime stories just like this one, with new stories added every Sunday. See the description below to become a member of the Honeybee Library. Always remember that Mrs. Honeybee believes in you. You are special and you are loved. I can't wait to see you again.